Hi. My name is Ted Knutson. I want to welcome you to the first ever uh, StatsBomb Football and Innovation Conference. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We had literally no idea how many people would show up today. And uh, you know, it looks like we've actually got a great room. Uh, we've actually got two rooms. Uh, don't forget that the research track will be upstairs in the Benetti Suite. But first, I'm going to bore you to death talking about our little company that uh, continues to get bigger and bigger. <clears throat> StatsBomb history. Uh, so StatsBomb has not always been a company. It started off as a blog back in 2013. I'm sure most of you are bored of hearing that story, especially if you listen to our, our podcast. It comes up somewhat regularly. Uh, but in the start of 2017, we turned into a company. And StatsBomb IQ was first released in February, late, or late February, early March of 2017. Uh, the idea behind IQ was that we would take data and we would process that data into visualizations, metrics, and basically football insight. Uh, we wanted to help companies, uh, sorry, and football clubs be able to do uh, recruitment, but also some opposition scouting and self-analysis. Uh, the concepts behind it were grounded in our work inside of football at Brentford and Michelin, but also we wanted to, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever worked inside of another company that you have to wait on their development resources to produce things, but we wanted to run faster. And so that's what StatsBomb kind of from the very start has been trying to do. In the end of October 2017, so October 21st, I actually looked it up recently, we started our data prototype with our collection group, Arcom. And uh, a number of the members of Arcom are here today, including the CEO, uh, Ali, I can't pronounce Ali's last name very well, so Fakrani, uh, if I screw that up, and Hesham uh, Abozekri uh, are, are both here today along with Osama. And, uh, and Ali Shash, if you see them, feel free to talk to them. Their data stuff is much more interesting than what we're gonna put on up here, at least on the stats bump side. So uh, yeah, they love to talk about all the things that, that Arcom has their own journey that ended up being combined with stats bump over time. So we started our data pro prototype two years ago. And then our global data launch happened on May 9th of 2018. Was anybody in the room, actually I know there are a couple, was anybody in the room here at the global data launch in May of last year? Okay, so not many, great, that's okay. Uh, the over under on people that would show up after inviting like literally hundreds of people from around Europe, we had 72. Uh, not that I was counting, but I believe we were short 17 uh, from the over under, the, the under came in on that one. But nevertheless, <clears throat> so from about you know, 55 people at that launch then, we're now well over 200 today. And that's super cool and, and you know, testament to, to a lot of the things that you see on the site, also testament to the hard work from everybody inside of the company uh, to produce what we hope is the best quality data uh, in the, the event data world right now in, in soccer slash football. So as of autumn 2019, we collect 40 competitions from around the world with more events than any other data provider out there. Uh, we don't collect tracking data right now, but we do use computer vision to help enhance our event collection and yeah, seeing the future pretty clearly, like these streams will start to get merged more and more. Uh, you know, I won't say what will definitely happen in the future, but you know, there's a suspicion that we'll start to be able to, to produce either some of our own or integrate with providers to be able to produce these combined data streams uh, in the not too distant future. So if you look, the ugly one, well, I mean, maybe some of you, it's in the eye of the beholder, but uh, the one on the, on the left here is the very first version of the StatsBomb radar generator. And it was uh, functional, I believe is, is how we would put it. But the idea behind it was to take stats and turn it into visualization to be easier to interpret. And I think that given the propagation of radars into the sporting world and I guess the wine tasting world and the beer world and everything like that, some would say that it's been wildly successful, at least at being more visually appealing, not necessarily giving you accurate information. Those of you who are in quants here, we can argue about that a different time. Uh, but thankfully, we've got Seth Partnow after me, and he agrees with me, so that's great. Uh, <laughs> we, the, the, the bottom right version here is where we are today. And we have spent something like six man years plus uh, working on StatsBomb IQ, which is the business intelligence layer that sits on top of StatsBomb data to be able to produce tons of information that is visually appealing, but also really practically useful. 
Uh, we started small, uh, and now you know, we're, we're approaching the point where I'm, I'm mostly comfortable with the product. It's actually quite large. Uh, but we won't stop developing, and we won't stop, you know, hopefully making it easier to use either. Uh, wrong way. All right, so stats bomb data. This was something that f fundamentally changed our company. And some people might ask, what was the point, right? Like, there were data providers out there. And actually, creating your own data company is exceptionally difficult. I don't recommend it. But we felt there was a need for it. We felt like we could do better. And that was the point. Like, could we take the ideas that we're taking from football, from working inside of the space, and produce something that was fundamentally better for people working in football or wanting to analyze football or for media wanting to show the game in a way that fans hadn't seen before, potentially for gamblers that wanted to have more accurate models to produce more useful information to use however they need to use it. So we built our own. And <clears throat> one of the best parts about, about this data is, is actually it makes it a lot easier to approach coaches because it is a little more accurate. And we listen to people like Bob Bradley and quite a few of our own coaches tell us, hey, there's a problem with your data because it doesn't show me this. And if you talk to the, the data companies in the past like we did, they say, well, it's not possible to do that in sort of the collection process that we have now. Or, well, this is kind of how it is, and you know, we're not able to upgrade that. Well, we finally got to the point where we're like, well, we can upgrade it. We'll do it ourselves. And so we did. Um, we had a, a defensive unit of activity and pressure that we felt was fundamental. Like the, the most basic thing that one player does in defending is close down another player with the ball. And that was missing from event data for the entirety of the history of event data. So we added it, and it's been a huge boon for the people, or for our customers that work with this data, to be able to then talk more practically about how their team is defending the ball and whether teams are, while well, their team is accurately, sorry, actively closing down players, the activity levels of forwards who previously were fairly unheralded outside of scouting, uh, someone like Roberto Firmino, he's got a particular archetype. He's a defensive forward. We see that very rarely, but the fact that, is that he does all of the work that sets up the press and, and the difficulty for teams to be able to play through that Liverpool defense, and apparently they've been pretty successful. Uh, we also included the position of the goalkeeper on every shot. I'm going to show you that more than talk to you about that, but we felt it was fundamental in being able to start to evaluate goalkeepers and their impact on not only expected goals models, but their impact on actually what they do on the pitch and were they in the right location and what's happening around them. Uh, the other thing that, that creating our own data did was give us the ability to modify and improve the data over time via technology or via process or via user feedback. And those of you who've worked with the public data that we've released have seen that some of the, the granularity has changed. Uh, there are people in this room that pointed out that we could do better on the shot locations, that we weren't granular enough, and I want to explicitly thank you. Without that feedback, and you're not customers, but we hope that someday you might be, uh, but without your feedback, we'd be worse. And, and that's honestly, like you don't get to be, you don't get to have hubris here. You have to figure out how do we improve? How do we match the customer's need? And that's what we're trying to do. So by taking that on, like we've improved that twice over since we started. And those early data years, you know, you kind of wince a little bit. I don't know if any of you are writers, but you look back at the stuff you produced five or 10 years ago, like, you know, I, I, I could have done that better. But nevertheless, it's there. And, and it, this is all an iterative process. Finally, by incorporating better data, the models built on top of that data should more accurately reflect reality. Now, we don't collect in running at the moment. That is something that we will do in the not too distant future. But by not doing that, we think that our sequences and our possessions are much more tied together. And our data is gonna have fewer errors inside of it. And you know, it's been a thing on social media recently. Some different companies have had some issues this year with errors. Uh, the, the image here in blue is a different company, uh, and it's a League Two game. And the, the person that flagged this up, the analyst that flagged this up on social media, I believe said that the guy who was collecting it must have been on gear, which I have no knowledge of, but uh, the, the stats that were produced were not great. And the problem is, like, this is one of the cheaper data providers out there. We have found again and again that taking not great data, data that's inferior, into the coaching groups and trying to talk to them about it, which is often a testy and difficult process, at least at the start, you need to have better quality. The moment that you show them something that's statistically wrong 
and they know that it's wrong, your credibility goes down the toilet. And so I know that there are many people out there who are looking at the cheaper data and saying, well, this is what we have, and it's better than having nothing. In some instances, that's not true. Uh, so anyway, ours is on the right. Uh, we had 17 shots for, for Newport County. They originally had 27. Uh, Plymouth Argyle had 14, 26 shots. Like, this is the basic stuff that coaches will notice. You know, they might not know necessarily how many passes took place, but the shot numbers they do kind of care about and they'll pay attention to. Another thing that our data has allowed us to do is improve the models that we produce to then have customers be able to look at and analyze the games. Some of the customers produce their own models on top of this, that's absolutely fine, but we continue to invest in data science to produce better models, to give you better information about teams, players, what's happening in the game. I'm gonna let these speak for themselves. Running out of time to get it. And at his moment, with a missed penalty, Mings just on the hits at the goalkeeper, I don't think he saw it. Passion Kimpembe, c'est frappé et ce sera dégagé. Il y a toujours euh, le ballon est toujours lillois, mal donné, très mal donné. Et c'est la balle de troisième but pour Mbappé. Il est lancé qu'il y a Mbappé. Mbappé va marquer Paris s'impose 3-1. Tel un joueur de football américain qui a traversé tout le terrain. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that our numbers are perfectly reflective of what actually happened. But I am going to tell you that our numbers are a lot more reflective than what you see in the competition. And it doesn't always happen. Like, there's plenty of data out there that's pretty good. Like, we just found that by incorporating more useful information, we could produce better models, which produce a more accurate reflection of what happens on the pitch. Our most recent thing that we've released, and this is actually in beta, uh, is called IQ Tactics. And IQ Tactics is our tactical visualization engine, which is like a big set of word or words that says that we draw pictures that try and incorporate the data and make it a little easier to analyze. Um, it's designed for power users. And for those of you who have had access to the platform, you'll see that there are a ton of different filters to allow you to drill further down and further down into the game uh, to find useful trends of things like build-up play, uh, what you see in this visualization is the final third entries from Burnley on the left and Manchester City on the right. Uh, and what's interesting actually is like if you incorporate the failed final third entries, you get a lot more vertical passes from Manchester City that look more like Burnley's successful ones. But you know, how you use the data is very much up to you. What we wanted to do was provide a, skills, uh, uh, a tool set for coaches and analysts to really dig deeper into the tactical side of the game. We also have this one, which those of you who, who saw my, my intro post on this have probably seen before. But this is Virgil van Dijk passes from the wings, or sorry, from his own half to the wings. Uh, this is the type of information that's really useful to potentially say, what does Virgil do with his left foot versus his right? Now, you, know, you may find some utility in that in uh, you know, opposition scouting and tactically, how do you want to close him down as much as possible, but you also might find a lot of utility in this for using it in scouting purposes. How one-footed is this player? What passes do they attempt with their right foot or their left foot? Potentially from different positions, different spots on the pitch. Maybe your attack is, has an extremely important set of passes that start that attack, and you're looking for players that can do this with one foot, with both foot, however you want to break it down. This is the type of information that we're trying to provide. Finally, uh, this would be Manchester City's short corner sequences uh, overall, uh, or short corner passes on the, on the left hand and, and all corners taken. And then the right hand is a specific sequence here. Uh, last year, for those of you who've been to our set piece courses uh, over the course of this season, last season City had a very specific uh, kind of pocket that they would take a short corner and they would immediately pass the ball vertically into that pocket and hopefully be able to go uh, 1v1 with the goalkeeper or make a, a square ball across the, the goal. Uh, this was a, a thing that we noticed in the data and the video at the same time. We wanted to build a visualization that helped teams look at this more frequently. Now, some of you are like, well, this would be a lot more useful if you had video attached to it. You're right. We agree with you. So what's next in StatsBomb? We're not done. We've had lots of things to do over the next 12 months, but the first thing that we're starting with is video. We will start to incorporate video across our platform, 
probably in the five to six month time might be faster. We've had some, some good success, but you know, I don't like to promise things before they're ready. So we will start integrating video with our data. And the two things that we produce at the collection level are data and encoded video off of video that we take in. The only thing that we're not producing back to the customers right now is encoded video. We will start to do that in the next six months time because we know that being able to put the data up next to the video makes it so much easier to talk to people in and around football about football terms. And the point at which coaches start to trust that the data and the video are basically the same is the point that you get to really take leaps forward in integrating these concepts and these ideas from you know, the PhDs that happen to be in certain Champions League clubs straight down to the pitch level. Uh, we're also working on customization, which is kind of what we call this whole sprint inside of Stats Bomb IQ. It's probably a, about a two, two and a half month project where basically we're taking the entire platform and allowing teams to customize it with tons of different metrics and visualization elements that we think will give them flexibility to incorporate the changing dynamic needs on the football pitch. I, I talked to one customer who said that our coaches literally change what they wanted to see inside of team radars uh, every week. <laughs> and I was like, well, we don't offer that on the platform right now, but we could and we will. Uh, this is the type of thing that, that we've been listening to customer feedback, allowing it to guide our development on the tool set. And finally, we're going to start to collect live. Uh, we, we didn't want to do that, and we have a very specific way that we will go about it, because most of our customers want to use this data because it's more accurate, because they want to model on top of it. They feel like it's more useful for them in that sense. They're not using it in a, in a super timely fashion that live data would, would have an impact there. However, some of them are. And some of our new potential customers will also want this. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to collect the live data, and we're going to do it with its own collection group, and it's going to sit there in a silo, and then we're going to still collect things the slow way. Because we think that those two data sets are not the same. If you have to collect in the, the timeliness of a match that's going on, it will impact your accuracy as a collector. And I don't know if any of you collected games, but it is hard. And it is especially hard if you have to do it perfectly live all of the time, every single time. It's a very difficult process. We are going to do that, but we're going we're gonna to section it off from the rest of the data. We're going to continue to enhance that data over here as well. What it means is we get to produce great data and add new things inside of the data set over here, while potentially giving teams more timely stuff that they might want to use in a 15-minute halftime, or media, or gambling, delivering that to them in its own set that will then be enhanced with a delivery later of the, the slower data. Finally, one big thing that I wanted to stress is we continue to support women's football uh, as much as we possibly can. And sometimes, you know, as a small com company, we went from, I think, 22 leagues last year. We had nine, I think, in our initial data set uh, in 2017, 18. 22 last year, 40 this year. But as part of our continuing commitment to women's football, like we've been releasing the data to the public uh, every single week. And now we offered up uh, in the summertime StatsBomb IQ and StatsBomb data for every single FAWSL team. Uh, seven teams have taken us up so far, assuming that one contract gets over the line in, in, the, in the next two, couple days. Um, but it's offered free to all, and we will continue that offer throughout the season. But we wanted to increase that. Like, we believe so strongly in women's football as fans of the game, as something that is quite simply right. You know? And so we wanted to find ways to continue to support this as well. So next season, uh, we will make the same offer to every team in the USA Women's League, the NWSL. We'll do it for France. We'll do it for the Primera Division in Spain. We'll do it for the German Bundesliga. And we'll do it for Italian Serie A women. We think that that is going to continue to be a fundamental cause for StatsBomb to increase and enhance the use and the popularity of women's football period, but also the data. And in some cases, we know for a fact that the women's teams in the FAWSL that have matching men's teams in the Premier League have better data than the men. And that makes me feel good, honestly. Like, I, I like that. I would also like to have the other customers, but nevertheless, I still like that you know, we, we've, we've mixed up the gender balance a little bit. OK, so what we're actually here for is to listen to a lot of people who are not me be really smart, right? Like, that's, that's the point. And I, we set out to put a conference together that we were excited about, something that, that people could attend that we looked at it and said, we've been to so many different conferences. What can we build that felt like ours, but also felt like, you know, 
could we do it a little bit better? That's like, it's a constant question inside of StatsBomb. And sometimes we don't. And I will tell you that when we iterate a process, it usually ends up better. So if anything screws up this year, you can blame me, and hopefully we'll do it better next year. And this includes if anybody's slides are wrong, that's our fault. Right? We, we screwed that up too. I'll, I'll, I'll take the hit on that because I'm just so happy that people are here. Like, our lineup is knockout. This is fantastic. And you guys get to listen to all of that. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors. Uh, Exasol is here as a sponsor. Also, we have Arcom as a sponsor. They do uh, content uh, for football and social media like around the world. Feel free to talk to them. Um, I did mention that the, the research track is upstairs. So it's a separate room. And this one is, is sort of the, the main room that, that will be live telecast uh, as long as we get the technology right. And if not, uh, for those of you who feel like there are so many good things, and I actually feel this way as well, so many good talks that you feel like you have to make hard choices about. One, that was part of the point. Like we wanted, we wanted to have such a great set of talks that you had difficult choices to make. But two, these these are all being filmed, and they'll end up on YouTube. And in most cases, the especially the research paper competition, uh, they will also have like specific white papers that will go out onto our website, like you've seen at other conferences. We felt like we wanted to sponsor that as much as possible as well. Um, so I want to thank all of the people from, who traveled from afar, not only here, but especially our, our speakers. Uh, some of them have come from eight time zones away, and we're delighted to have them here. I also want to point out um, one very specific person that you might not know, but I feel like he deserves much broader uh, notoriety for his work. And, and that guy is Lukasz Szczepanski. And I, if I've screwed up the name, I apologize. But that is, uh, I'm not Polish. Um, but Lukash, I worked with at Smart Odds. And Lukash's dissertation was basically one of the early non-public works on expected goals. And then he also had another work looking at expected passing models. It was the first time I ever saw a passing model that said that effectively, you know, not all shots are alike. Well, not all passes are alike. And Lukash took a very mathematical approach to that and produces amazing work. He's one of the brightest speakers and thinkers in the football world. And because he works in a very specific job that doesn't allow him to, to publish things into the world, you might not know about him. But he agreed to come be one of our featured researchers. And I just wanted to thank him for being here and tell you you should definitely go see him. Or you know, you could potentially, let's see, he's up against Vasa, who is also awesome. So you know, these are the tough choices that you have. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna, gonna step off here and tell you all to enjoy the day. Uh, I also, before we move on, Charlotte Randall is here and she's done so much of the work. Uh, she's our Chief Operating Officer at StatsBomb. Uh, without her, this would not have happened. And, and so thank you so much to Charlotte. You know, tell her things, uh, you know, nice things if things go well. Complain to me though. Like, that's, that's the way that the communication works. I also wanna point out two other people with StatsBomb. Uh, one of them is Shergul Arshad. He is our Chief Commercial Officer. He will happily be talking to you today. We have demo stations over there uh, in the, the food area. Uh, so if you want to come check out StatsBomb IQ, which is a lot more interesting than static images, uh, feel free to do that throughout the course of the day. And the final person, and is Nat here? Uh, OK, so back there in the corner is, is Nat James. And if you like anything that appears on the front of StatsBomb IQ or almost all the visualizations that we do on the website statsbomb.com, Nat has designed that. He is a genius, and he also deserves some, some, some praise for that type of work. Please enjoy your day. Thank you very much. I'll see you later.